Well, it's no secret liberal news outlets like MSNBC have been carrying water for the president by refusing to ask tough questions about last week's health care debacle. And when one GOP congressman called him out, it left one anchor, well, sort of speechless. That's how pathetic I think news reporting has become when we won't ask tough questions to the administration. Well, we've asked come questions up, to I'll both take sides. All, uh, that, that's well, not fair. Why do you want your own health care and you won't join us in Obamacare? That question I haven't seen anybody ask on MSNBC. Please ask it because they don't have a good, they don't have a good answer for it. They have their own gold-plated health care plan well, so that they're in. And they don't, no, I'm not. I'm in Obamacare. I'm in Obamacare, Andrea. All members of Congress are in my family. The president should join us in Obamacare and the rest of America. That's, is that pretty reasonable? We should all be treated equally under the law? Why should members of Congress be in Obamacare and not the president? Explain that one. Isn't that fair? Uh, crickets. Wisconsin Congressman Sean Duffy is my guest this morning. Thanks for being here. Well, it certainly takes a lumberjack to bring the wood. Why <laughs> good morning, is, Elizabeth. Good morning. So where's the fair debate when it comes to Obamacare, and why is the liberal media standing in the way? Of First of all, I don't, I, I don't think it's been fair. Mainstream media hasn't been willing to actually report the last offer that we've made to the administration. Before the government shut down, all we had asked the president to do is, one, fully fund the government. Number two, have the president, Jay Carney, and the whole administration go into Obamacare like members of Congress and the rest of America. But the last thing we asked for is to uh, treat the American families the same way as big businesses in regard to taxes and penalties in Obamacare. And when you push back on the liberal media saying, isn't that reasonable? They don't have an answer for it. Uh, uh, Elizabeth, I don't know if you know, John Stewart at Comedy Central was the first one to ask not even a tough question, a question <laughs> to the administration uh, about, about why they won't join us in some reasonable proposals. And Kathleen Sebelius, uh, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, couldn't answer their question. They're just not used to getting asked any tough questions in regard to this current debate on the shutdown. Right. No, certainly not. And on Tuesday, there was an hour-long conference where the president spoke and answered questions, but none from TV reporters, and no questions were asked about Obamacare. What, was, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think the president is taking softball questions. Um, I mean, you look at the Huffington Post uh, asking easy questions to the president. He doesn't want to be asked the hard questions like, why won't you join Obamacare? Why isn't your wife at the computer signing up like other families and other uh, Americans uh, trying to get onto the website because they don't have a good answer for that. So they want to they want to skirt around the tough questions and the reasonable proposals from our side of the aisle and uh, and get easy questions that tee them up to sell their story. Um, but I don't think that that can last very long. You're starting to see the, the liberal media crack and, and tell some of these stories. Uh, Wolf Blitzer was actually out saying, maybe the Republicans were right. Maybe there should have been a one-year delay after we've seen how uh, poorly Obamacare has been rolled out. It might have been pretty wise on behalf of the administration to take a one-year delay and get all the kinks worked out. I mean, we've been, we've been told we're, we're asking the wrong questions when someone asked the question. Um, yesterday, Jay Carney uh, didn't want to answer the question when it came to the, the death penalty um, and payments to, to those that have fallen um, in the line of service. How do we get answers then, Congressman? Well, it's, it's challenging. I think, I think bringing out the question is important. But it, right there, that was a great example of the administration playing politics with the shutdown and, and causing some pain on uh, the families of our, of, our, of our fallen heroes. But that's not new for this administration. You've seen they've walled off, uh, gated off the World War II Museum. It's an open air museum making sure our World War II vets, probably their last time coming to Washington, D.C., they can't access the memorial that was erected on their behalf and in their honor just to cause political pain. And this is petty. Look back, Elizabeth, remember uh, when sequester came into effect? Remember he shut, the president shut down the White House so kids who had gone through bake sales, raising money to go see the people's house, these young kids in America couldn't see it because the president wanted to make a political point. And I think that's what's so sad about petty politics and trying to inflict pain on, on, uh, on Americans that should be left out of this debate and, and, and can be left out of the debate. The president's trying to use them as pawns to make points. Congressman Sean Duffy. I call you Tuffy Duffy, by the way. We thank yeah, yeah, you for yeah. being with us <laughs> and, Thanks, keeping, and keeping the dialogue fair. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Up next, a Fox <laughs> Business Alert. Brand new joblessness number.